And what are we doing instead? At Copenhagen, this December, weeks away, a treaty will be signed. Your president will sign it. Most of the third world countries will sign it because they think they're going to get money out of it. Most of the left-wing regimes around the world, like the European Union, will rubber stamp it. Virtually nobody won't sign it. I have read that treaty. And what it says is this. That a world government is going to be created. The word government actually appears as the first of three purposes of the new entity. The second purpose is the transfer of wealth from the countries of the West to third world countries in satisfaction of what is called coyly a climate debt because we've been burning CO2 and they haven't and we've been screwing up the climate. We haven't been screwing up the climate but that's the line. And the third purpose of this new entity, this government, is enforcement. How many of you think that the word election or democracy or vote or ballot occurs anywhere in the 200 pages of that treaty? Quite right, it doesn't appear once. So at last, the communists who piled out of the Berlin Wall and into the environmental movement and took over Greenpeace so that my friends who founded it left within a year because they'd captured it. Now the apotheosis is at hand. They are about to impose a communist world government on the world. You have a president who has very strong sympathies with that point of view. He's going to sign. He'll sign anything. He's a Nobel Peace Laureate. Of course he'll sign it. And the trouble is this. If that treaty is signed, your constitution says that it takes precedence over your constitution. And you can't resile from that treaty unless you get the agreement of all the other states' parties. And because you'll be the biggest paying country, they're not going to let you out. So, thank you, America. You were the beacon of freedom for the world. It is a privilege merely to stand on this soil of freedom while it is still free. But in the next few weeks, unless you stop it, your president will sign your freedom, your democracy, and your prosperity away forever. And neither you nor any subsequent government you may elect will have any power whatsoever to take it back again. That is how serious it is. I have read the treaty. I've seen this stuff about government and climate debt and enforcement. They are going to do this to you whether you like it or no. But I think it is here, here in your great nation, which I so love and I so admire, it is here that perhaps at this 11th hour, at the 59th minute and the 59th second, you will rise up and you will stop your president from signing that dreadful treaty that purposeless treaty, for there is no problem with the climate, and even if there were, economically speaking, there's nothing we can do about it. So I end by saying to you the words that Winston Churchill addressed to your president in the darkest hour before the dawn of freedom in the Second World War. He quoted from your great poet Longfellow, Sail on, O ship of state. Sail on, O union strong and great. Humanity with all its fears, with all the hopes of future years, is hanging breathless on thy fate.